الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد. So continuing on in our series during the holy month of Ramadan 2012 in discussing some of the manners to observe and some of the things to be aware of during this holy blessed month and outside of this holy blessed month and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by all of his divine names and attributes subhanahu to bless the Muslims everywhere and help them in their various struggles and their persecution to bless the Muslims to be patient to bless the Muslims with guidance to bless the Muslims to come back to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to have muhabba and love between us and to unite upon the correct creed and methodology of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and help one another spend our wealth together may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant relief to our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted and beaten and imprisoned in Ethiopia as we speak and our brothers and sisters who are being killed and persecuted in Burma as we speak and our brothers and sisters who are being slaughtered in Syria as we speak and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them and have mercy upon the deceased amongst them and bless the Muslims everywhere today's sitting we're going to discuss Afat al which is it means the evil or the plague or the disease of the tongue which is imperative for us to reflect on especially during this time uh, during Ramadan that we should be cautious with what we say what we speak about and this is something all of us are in need of us and to reflect on because all of us fall into this trap I know that I do and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me and forgive all those who are listening and bless us with guidance and bless us to be able to restrain our tongues from speaking about things and we'll talk about the different ways in which we can go astray and some of the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salaf Asari in regards to the diseases of the tongue so in Kitab al-Iman min Sahih Bukhari Qawlahu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al-Muslimu min Sallima Muslimun min lisanihi wa yadihi so in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the Muslim is the one who who the other Muslims are safe from his tongue and his hand meaning that the true Muslim is the one the one who is actualizing Iman is the one who is not being harmful to his Muslim brothers and sisters by speaking against them or harming them physically by hurting them so they the the true Muslim is the one who the other Muslims are safe from his tongue and safe from his hand when Uqbat ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal kultu ya rasulullah ma najat qala amsik alayka lisanaka so in another hadith narration of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which was is a Sahih narration that was in uh, was in Tirmidhi, and Ibn Majah wa Ahmed wa Darami wa Hakam wa Ghayra. In this hadith of the the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Uqbat uh, ibn Amr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said, "I said, O Messenger of Allah, what is success?" And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded by saying, "Holding or restraining your tongue, restraining your tongue." Wa qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi hadith an akhar, "Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al akhar, fal yaqul khairan aw yasmut." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it said as collected in Tirmidhi, or that was collected in. Uh, in Bukhari and Muslim, Mutafakun Alayhi, this hadith, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever believes in Allah and the day of judgment, then say something good or keep silent. So that shows us there the, uh, 
those conditions. The conditions or the shurut for speaking is that for the believer, the one who believes in Allah by all, all of his divine names and attributes, by his rububiyah, his lordship, and his uluhiyah, by worships him in him alone, and believes in the day of judgment, Amur al ghayb these things that we, we haven't seen the day of judgment, but we believe in it as Allah has told us in the Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us in many authentic hadith about the day of judgment and that it's a pillar of Iman, both of these are pillars of Iman. The one who believes in this should either speak good or keep silent. So that's right there for us, for us as conditions or for those conditions for being a Muslim is that we keep silent. The believer should keep silent or speak good. So only speak good or keep silent. Restrain yourself. Don't involve yourself in many affairs. And we're going to talk about this uh, a little bit later. Uh, some of the ways that we, uh, some of the things we need to avoid in relation to this hadith and these other ahadith that we're narrating or we are relating of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وعن وعن سهل بن سعد رضي الله تعالى عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال من يضمن لي ما بين لحيه لحيه وما بين رجليه أضمن له الجنة the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as collected in Bukhari that whoever can guarantee what is between their uh, their beard and their mustache basically and what is between their legs that I guarantee for them paradise meaning the person that safeguards their tongue is cautious with what they speak about, with restraining from backbiting and slander and cursing and abusing people and telling lies and the other ways, uh, the the ways in and in involving ourselves in things that are, are of no benefit to us and speaking ill about the scholars and, and the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, speaking ill about the students of knowledge, speaking ill about the people of the, the Salihin, speaking ill about your Muslim brothers and sisters, speaking ill about anyone, in fact, unless they have the, unless rightfully they deserve to be spoken about. Meaning, for example, someone is of Ahla Bidah, Ahla Ahwa, they have deviated from the religion of Islam, and they, they are Muslim, but they've deviated from the principles in Islam, or they've put new principles in Islam or new celebrations or new practices they should be warned against in order to protect the community from their harm and in order to hopefully rectify their affairs and for them to come to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and in order to protect ourselves from their harm so this is the shad of the believer this is the, the affair of the believer and the Prophet Sallallahu said the one who guarantees for me Basically, their mouth, you know, what is the, between their, their their beard and their mustache, and what is between their, their legs, meaning their private parts, then I guarantee for them Jannah. So the person who restrains himself from speaking about things that are of no benefit, and they refrain from doing illegal, having illegal sexual intercourse, zina and ad adultery and fornication, or masturbation and all the other bad things that we could uh, that a person does with their their private part. If a person can restrain themselves from those things and only speak about the lawful things, only speak lawfully and good, and only uh, share their private parts with those people who are lawful for them, meaning the man for his wife and the wife for her husband, that then this person who can guarantee this, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has guaranteed for them Jannah, Paradise. So this shows us the importance of protecting those two uh, those two parts of, of our body, that they are they in fact can bring us to good or they can bring us to evil. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ma min shayin athkulu fi mizan mu'min yom al-qiyam min husn al-khulq wa inna Allah yubghidu al-fayish al-bidhi 
to the Prophet Sallallahu said, there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners. And verily, Allah hates sinful, wicked speech. And the Prophet Sallallahu said in another hadith that whoever and the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in another hadith that the person who safeguards, which is similar to the meaning of the other hadith we mentioned, that safeguards their private parts and their tongue, then they will they're also guaranteed paradise as was mentioned in that hadith in another narration in a narration of, of, of the salaf some of the statements of the salaf regarding this very important issue of being cautious with our tongue An Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal wallahi والله الذي لا إله إلا هو ليس شيء أخوج إلى طول السجن من لساني. So Abdullah bin Mas'ud, Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said, he said, I swear by Allah, the the only one worthy of worship, who, who there is no one worthy of worship except Him. That there isn't a thing which is more in need of being imprisoned for a long time than my tongue. وَكَانَ يَقُولُ يَا لِسَانِي كُلْ خَيْرٍ تَغْنَمْ وَاسْكُتْ عَنْ شَرْ تَسَلَّمْ مِنْ قَبْلْ أَنْ تَنْدَمْ So, in another narration, Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه, he used to say, on a regular basis, he used to say, كَانَ يَقُولُ O tongue, Say something good and you will be successful. You will win. And keep silent or restrain yourself from evil. And you will have achieved, uh, you will be successful. Before you gain, before you're, you're sorry, before you're sorry. Or before you have become, uh, before you uh, are sorry. So in this narration we see, that Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu illustrated for us and emphasized for us the importance of restraining the tongue. That by restraining the tongue we gain success. And by keeping silent and restraining ourselves from evil then we, we uh, our actions will be good and correct before we become saw us be, become before we become sorry for uh, for what we've said, meaning the day of judgment, before we die, and so forth, the punishment in the grave. Because we know one of the reasons that people are punished in the graves is for the tongue, for namima, for for uh, for backbiting and carrying tales between the people in order to spread evil and harm. So this is one of the reasons people get punished in the graves. What is the proof for this? Is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. مر النبي صلى الله عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم بكبرين فقال إنهم ل يعذبان إنهم إنهما لا يعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير أما أهلهما فكان لا يستر من البول وأما الآخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة. So in this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which illustrates for us that Ghiba and Namima is haram and it is one of the th causes for a person to be punished in the grave is a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ was walking by some graves and he said to one of his companions he said verily they are being punished meaning the people of the grave in these two graves and they're not being punished for something which the people think is kabir which the people think is very big or very great and then he said, as for one of them, or as for the first one, then he used to not protect himself when he urinated, when he went to the bathroom. You know, meaning it either splashed on his clothes, or he didn't make a stinja and clean himself, 
him or herself properly. And then he said, as for the second one, is they used to carry tales of the people in order to spread evil. For Kadi Yimshi bin Namima, they can they used to spread Namima, meaning uh, backbiting or or spread tales of people in order to spread fitna between them. So this shows that the that these people were being punished for the grave, and that this is one of the reasons people get punished for the graves, and it affirms for us the belief of Ahl Sunnati wa Jamaa is that there is a punishment in the grave, and there is um, also for those people who are the righteous and, and so forth, that they will receive a comfort, uh, they will be comforted in the grave. So a person can be either comforted or they can be punished in the grave, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the fire and protect us from the punishment of the grave and protect us from those things which lead to the punishment of the grave subhanahu wa ta'ala وعن أبي دربا رضي الله تعالى عنه قال أنصف أذنيك من فيك وإنما جعل لك أذنان وفم واحد لتسمع أكثر مما تتكلم beautiful hadith or beautiful narration of Abi Dharga he said that in the last uh, part of this narration he said he said verily that you uh, it was made for you or, or that you have two ears and one mouth and this is in order that you would listen more than you speak so this is the minhaj of the son of Asari. This is the methodology of the Salaf Asari. It's not to be excessive in speech, excessive in speaking about others, excessive in cursing people, excessing, excessive in making takfir of people, excessive in making tabdi or tafsik of people. But the methodology of the Salaf is they, they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they did those things based on the conditions for doing so. And they did those things with wara and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they spoke about Ahl bidah or a mistake of Ahl Sunnah, they did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They strove to have their niyyah, their intention correct. They were fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fearful of making mistakes and getting and, and falling into sin. One Hassan al Basri, Rani Allah ta'ala anhu qal, Kano yukulun inna lisan al mu'min wa ra qalbuhu. Fa ida arada an yatakalama bi shayin. تدبره بقلبه ثم أمضى أمضاه وإن لسان المنافق أمام قلبه فإذا هم بشيء أمضاه بلسانه ولم يتدبره بقلبه. In this narration of Hassan al Basri رضي الله تعالى عنه one of the tabi'in he said رحمه الله تعالى he said the people used to say that verily the tongue of the believer is behind his heart. So if he wants to speak about something, he thinks about it with his heart first. He contemplates and reflects and uh, reflects with his heart. Then he speaks. And that the tongue of the hypocrite is in front of his heart. So then if something becomes important to him, he speaks with his tongue. And he doesn't reflect and think and contemplate with his heart. In another narration of Hassan, he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Ma aqala deenahu man lam yahfiv lisanahu. So in this narration, Rahimahullah Ta'ala of Hassan al-Basri, he said, there, uh, the person who does not uh, reflect in his, his religion, or the person who does not have does not have understanding in his religion if he does not protect his tongue. So a person will not gain this important characteristic in an understanding 
and be a person of intellect, akala, with regards to his religion, if they, they will not attain this if they do not preserve their tongue. So this shows us being cautious of what we say and what we speak about, who we speak about, how we speak about things, what we're speaking about. Try your best to not speak about things unless they are things that benefit you. And this is advice first and foremost to myself and then to you, that we have to strive our best, and especially during the holy month of Ramadan, and to realize that the malaika, they're with us. They're writing down everything we do, so we have to be cautious. Some of the things we want to avoid is speaking about those things which do not involve us. So getting involved in people's affairs. Oh, what did so-and-so do? What did sister so-and-so do? I need to hear about that. Oh, I heard you heard about this. Oh, what you, you were calling me earlier about sister and brother so-and-so and this. Okay, getting in those affairs which have no concern to you. That's one of the ways uh, uh, that a person can spoil or destroy their tongue because they're speaking about those things which have no importance to them. Backbiting. Oh, what did you hear about that sheikh? Oh, I heard sheikh so-and-so refuted that sheikh. We need to spread that. We need to keep talking about it. Let's keep this going on as long as possible. Well, these kind of issues don't affect you because when you're in the grave, you won't be asked about that. When they're carrying you to your grave to put you in, you're going to be dealing with your affairs. So deal with your affairs now. Get your record straight now. Meaning not to avoid knowing beneficial knowledge. No. But if it's beneficial, that's what we have to reflect. Is it beneficial, what you're hearing, and for you to speak about it? And there's many, many narrations of the Salaf that deal with these issues. Another thing we need to avoid, as we mentioned, was ghiba, is is backbiting, and namima, and slander, or spreading tales about people, so even whether they're lies or whether they're truthful. All of those things we need to avoid, and those are all ways in which we uh, can destroy our tongues and destroy ourselves. And the last thing, we also have to be cautious about uh, being excessive in praising people and be excessive in uh, praising our own deeds or, 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 and so forth. And we have to strive our best to preserve our tongue in every which way that we can and protect ourselves from any and all kinds of shock. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.